Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So uh, today I want to talk about um, C++ template functions. So template functions are a mechanism that allows us to write a function blueprint and then the compiler can rewrite uh, our function blueprint in such a way that we can call it with uh, lots of different data types. It's a type of polymorphism and there's actually a few different types of templates in C++ and today we're just concentrating on um, function templates. Okay, so let's just have a bit of a look at the problem. Um, let's pretend that we want to write some function that takes two parameters and it figures out the minimum of them. So this is kind of a canonical example, um, something like this. Let's um, just copy this over to C++. So I've got a bit of Visual Studio action happening here. And we've also got one that takes doubles as parameters. Okay, so this is just basic function overloading. So we want a function that returns the minimum of two parameters and we've written it out twice. One that takes integers, one that takes doubles. So we could call this, you know, something like um, int a equals 90 and int b equals whatever and min a, b, maybe c out that. And also obviously 90 is less than um, 2, 1, 3 and obviously a and b are integers so this top function just here will be called. So that's just basic function overloading. But the trouble is we mightn't want to write out our function twice especially if later on we need a min for um, say characters and a min for short integers. You know we don't want to rewrite this code again and again and again so what we might like to do is write out a function template. So this is a template function just here. and paste. There we go. What's happened here? Current? No. I don't, I don't want to search anything. Thank you for offering. Alright, this is a template function just here. So the syntax is um, we write template and then open our triangle brackets and then we use um, a collection, a series of um, type names and uh, call them something. So I've called my type name T just here. Then we close the triangle brackets. And this template specification is usually on its own line although you can do this if you like yeah and what's going to happen here is that C++ or the compiler is going to have a look at all of the calls to the function so this call just down here min a b uses an int and int is going to become this t just here so wherever we use the term t this type name t in our function it's going to be replaced with int so this is what the compiler is going to do. It's going to write this as that. Yeah, fair enough, because we've used int in our call down here. But the cool thing is that we can also call it with doubles. So first of all, we'll just run it with int and make sure that it works. There you go, 90. 90 is smaller than 213. That's good, but we could also use double. So double and double. That would work fine as well. There you go, 90 is still smaller than 213. That's fantastic. Uh, or you can use floats like this. It doesn't matter. Um, the important thing also is that we can call this function more than once. So if we call it with um, maybe A and B as floats and we also have another two variables called maybe C um, equals 50, 67. Well, they're not floats, they're ints and uh, int d equals 78. Um, we can ca call this function with uh, c and d as well. And what's going to happen in this instance is the compiler is going to see that this first call to min uses floats so it's going to write out this code just here like um, whoops, like this float 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 and it's going to see that we also later on call the same template function with integers. So it's also going to write out a version with int. That's literally what's going to happen. The compiler is going to write out two versions of this function because it's a template. Alright, so it's going to write out those two um, versions to set because that's what we've called in our code. Uh, if we used doubles and called it later on then you know the compiler would just write out a double version. Simple as that. Okay, but the important thing is it's, it's really a time-saving thing for us programmers. We don't have to write out this um, you know, function again and again. It just it just um, calls the less than operator here, and uh, any two data types like integers, floats, doubles, any two that this comparison here can be performed upon. Uh, we can use um, min, and the C++ compiler is perfectly happy to use this template to write the code for us. 
Um, okay, so that's that's just a little bit about calling the functions there. Yeah, it's a little bit about calling the functions. So in a way, it's kind of like this is how I like to think of it. This um, type name just here, um, this t kind of becomes a variable, but it's a special variable. It's a variable that holds a data type like int or double. Yeah, but that's sort of what it is. And then the compiler will come along and using whatever variable we happen to you know call the function with, be it int or double. Uh, the compiler will come along and write out the appropriate function for us. It's really quite cool. Um, Alright, so this is a bit interesting. If you've got two different data types, so say an int and a double, and you try and call this template function, what happens? Well, let's have a bit of a squiz and we'll see. So we've got um, an int and we've also got a double. Alright, so right now we're using uh, an integer and a double. We're trying to call min, but this template up here only has one you know data type t so the compiler can't figure out whether t should be an int as the first parameter specifies or if it should be a double as the second parameter specifies so if we try and run this it's obviously not going to work um, there you go see declaration of min krill what are you doing <laughs> It's not going to work. It can't figure out which data type to use. So in this case, what we can do is um, after the function's name, just here, we can specify the data type. We want to call double. Um, what's going to happen now is that the compiler is going to replace all of the occurrences of t um, with double because that's what we've explicitly stated here. We want to call um, the template using doubles. Um, what's also going to happen, incidentally, is that a, which is an integer, is going to be cast to double. Yeah. All right, good stuff. So 90 is still less than 213. That's very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, so that's a little bit about you know explicitly specifying the data type of t, or we could say in here an int, you know, and um, b would be cast to int, or we could just go short even, you know, and then a and b will both be cast to short. It's up to you. Yeah. But this is a a method of explicitly stating what type of um, data we want t to become in the template. Okay, next one. Using the type in the body. Okay, so another example here of a template, another pretty canonical example. Say we want to write a template which swaps two parameters, a and b, and you know we want we want to be able to swap integer variables and double variables, so we might just write it out as a template. This is what I've got just here. Um, let's copy it over to our code and see what happens. Okay, so things have changed a little. Um, let's make two integers. Int a equals, I'll say, 78. You've got to put equals in, bro. There we go. Int b equals 91. And we don't want to see out anything. We want to call swap a b. And see out a. And we might also see out b. So what's going to happen here is that the two parameters are going to be swapped. Um, the a will become 91. The b will become 78. But what I'm actually trying to illustrate is that you can declare um, new variables of type t in the body of your um, template. Yeah, so that's just here, t temp. So whatever I happen to use, it's integers in this case, um, the compiler is going to write int temp. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, also note here that they're, per they're passed by, um, by reference because of this ampersand just here. Yeah, you have to do that because we actually want to swap the values of the variables a and b and um, yeah, in order to do that, we need to pass them by reference. But if we just hit play, yeah, there you go. So the, the, the variables have swapped, which is lovely, because <laughs> that's kind of what we wrote the program for. So 78 has become 91, 91 has become 78. All good. Um, all right, next, next slide. Um, templates result in a larger EXE. So this is something that Nowadays, with the masses of, uh, of RAM and uh, hard drive space that we have in uh, you know, a modern computer, this doesn't tend to matter, but it might matter if you're writing something for, say, an embedded system or a system without so much RAM. When the compiler sees a template function, it's actually going to write out code for uh, every version that we happen to use in our program. So if we only use min, the function from before, if we only call it with integers, then the compiler is just going to write out one version in the uh, eventual binary code 
uh, executable. If we use min with integers, then later on we call it with floats and later on with doubles, well the compiler is going to have to write out three copies of the min function. So it might be interesting to know that this literally results, you know, using, using um, templates literally results in the compiler writing out multiple versions of the function for us. Alrighty. Well, that's good. Okay, but this is, this is really the question. So if we go back to our min uh, example, our, our example of finding the minimum of two values, if I just copy this, right, if I just copy this back to here, so this is, this is an example without templates, I'm just using double, so double A, double B. I can use min anyway, look at this, C out, uh, min, I can call min anyway, even though A and B are integers, let's have a look. There you go, 78 is smaller than 91. So the question is, what is the point? What is the point of using templates when you can already call min with, with, with integers or they could be floats? They could be unsigned char, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, the program is gonna compile and run. Uh, it's just gonna cast to the parameters first. Well, this is the point. This is, this is really where things start to get interesting, I reckon anyway. There's actually two syntaxes for template functions. So as we've seen, you can say template and type name and xxx or whatever the type name happens to be. Um, I don't think I mentioned, but it doesn't have to be T. You can put whatever you like here. Yeah, it's just yeah, whatever whatever token you use here, then you've got to use throughout the body of your um, function. Anyway, the other syntax is class class. Yeah, so we could we could do something like this. Um, Yeah, there you go. And that's that's exactly the same thing as writing type name as we had before. But it does allude to something really interesting. So we don't actually have to use basic data types for this, um, what would you say, data. This, this XXX thing here doesn't have to just be an int or a double or whatever. It can be a user-specified class. I do want to be ultra, ultra clear that there's absolutely no difference between um, template type name and template class. So that's a question that comes up again and again and again. Whenever whenever people are learning about templates is what is the difference between type name and class? There, there is no difference. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's just have a bit of a look at maybe using a template with a user specified class because this is, this is really where things get cool. So here I've started writing out a little point class, just a little 2D point class. So it's got double X and Y, a little constructor, and it also defines the operator less than, which will become super important in just a moment. Let me just copy this excellent point class over to here. And I'll get rid of what we had in main, and instead in main we'll make a couple of points. I'll say points um, P1, and I might I might put it at 78x and 63.9y and I make point P2. That's not a 2. <laughs> That's not a 2. Point P2, I'll make it 671.3 and the y value can be 9.52. <laughs> That's pretty specific. All right, so now we've got two little objects, P1 and P2, two little objects. <laughs> Sounds like the start of a nursery rhyme. Uh, below is the beginnings of a 2D point class. We can then call the template function using the point objects. Well, we could, but I deleted the template function, so that was quite clever of me. Um, all right, so we need to get our template function back again. Well. I'll just say template class uh, xxx uh, 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 min. I might just copy it actually. Let's just copy it from the previous slide because it's taken too long to type. Okay, here it is here. Okay, so that's our template function. That's our point class and let's see what happens if we say min um, P1, P2. We'll set we'll set P3 to that. So uh, or smaller. 
smaller equals P3, and then we'll see out the X and Y of smaller. Um, they are actually private, so I might have to make them public. Okay, X and Y are private, so we'll make them public first. Make them public first, would ya? Endel. Capital Endel. I'm really about Endeling today. <laughs> I'm really about okay. okay, so... We're still calling this same template function up here, this min function, but this time we're using, um, instead of a, a normal data type, say double or, or char or whatever, we're using our own point class. So what we should end up with here is whichever is the smaller out of these two, which will probably be uh, point P1, so 7863.9 should, should be printed out. Yeah, there you go. So P1 was the smaller. A couple of things that are important here. Number one, you don't have to use... Um, type name, you can use class if you like, makes no difference whatsoever. Um, T doesn't have to be a default C++ type, it can be a user defined type, so long as any operation that you perform in the template function, um, the user defined type supports. So right here in the template function we use the less than operator and down here in my class I've implemented that less than operator. Yeah, so it actually just computes the magnitude, I think, of the, of the point. So whichever is closest to the origin, um, it determines is the smallest, which is uh, P1. Yeah, I hope that makes a bit of sense. So that's, that's really, really important. That's really important. Uh, let's just move along. Using the type in the body. Did we not? Oh, no, we did. This is a... Okay, so we're back to our 2D point class. Calling it. Yeah, we did that. And I made the same mistake. Uh, on the slides as I did in, uh, in, in, in the code in that I made it um, the X and Y private uh, and important. Yeah, we said this already. So the important thing is mostly that you've got to implement the less than operator in your point class if you intend to use it in your template. Um, alrighty, so moving along, another interesting thing is that you can actually use more than one type name. So this template just here um, computes the min again, only the Data types don't necessarily need to be the same. So if we come back over here to our program, and if I just delete this point class quickly, um, if we try and call this template just here um, using two different data types, so int a equals whatever and double b equals 78.2, uh, if I try and call that with uh, a and b, as we said before, the compiler can't figure out whether t just here should be int or if it should be double. Yeah, so it doesn't know what code to write from this template because I've used two different data types. So one way that you can write this template out so that it can handle two different data types is just to write out another data type. So we could call it T2, for example. And the A parameter is T and the B parameter is T2. This has stopped making sense because we've got to return the minimum I don't think min is a good example of this. Yeah, I don't think min. I think maybe um, less than is a better example. Yeah, let's just say now return um, a less than b. Okay, min isn't a good example of that because it returns um, you know one of the data types, but less than might be. So we'll say less than. Now we can call our template function less than with two different data types an integer and a double and t will get assigned to integer and will get int a and t2 will get assigned to double because that's the data type of the second parameter here so t2 will just become double uh, I don't think this is going to print anything out no it didn't print anything out but if it's um, the C++ that I know and love it you know <laughs> would record that 23 is less than 78.2 my point is you can use more than one data type and they don't have to be the same. They could actually be the same. Um, yeah, but they don't have to be. Um, calling specifying data types. Uh, what? Oh yeah, you can specify the exact types if you've got multiple data types. So down here in less than, if we wanted to, we could say that it's an integer and a double. Uh, but C++ will figure that out just by kind of looking at them. <laughs> It'll look at them a bit weird and just know what types they are. 
Uh, or you could cast A to a float if you want. It's up to you. I don't know why you'd cast A to a float. But you might be into that sort of thing. So we could actually cast this to a char as well. A float and a char. Um, it's going to cast 23 to a float. 23.0F uh, and it's going to cast 78 to a char. Just 78. That's good. Um, Alright, so the following topics are slightly more advanced and slightly more irrelevant too, but if you're interested in this kind of thing, I don't know, you might like to hear all this stuff. If you're studying for an exam, um, this might be overload. I don't know. We'll see how we go. Quirky prototypes. Okay, this is this is just odd, but let's have a bit of a squeeze. So if I just delete this, um, you can't you can't split the template uh, prototype from the body of the template in the normal way. So if I add a header add and it's a new item and it's a header and I'll just call it um, less than and we might just pragma once like that so normally you'd think that what you can do is uh, just pop this prototype just here into a header like thither and then and then write your uh, the body of the function in in another C++ file. Look, long story short, you can't. Yeah, you can't do this. But I'll just show you what you can't do so that you know not to do it. <laughs> you can't, so don't even try. Oh, you can try if you want. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to do it right now. Okay, you'd think you could do something like that, but as I've mentioned in my brambling and ramblings, um, you can't. So if we just go back here and we delete this and we include our less than, let's see what sort of error we get. Um, less than whatever. And we hit run. There you go, look at that. Unresolved external symbol. So you can't actually do that. You can't do this. You can't split the prototype from the body of the function. The only way to um, implement a proto, uh, in, 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 sorry, the only way to implement a whatever we're talking about um, template is to include the body and the prototype in the same file like this, um, which is a little bit strange, but that's just the way things are. So let's just remove and delete and run. Yeah, there you go. So we can run it. The only way to do it is to include it in the same file. And that's usually the header. That's usually where you'd put it. Good stuff. So as far as I know, this functionality was going to be included in uh, C++11, but um, folks generally decided that it was just too hard to program for the uh, compilers. So they decided to just drop it. And if you want to know more information about the ongoing struggle of um, <laughs> templates being in two different files, um, you can read this little PDF here, Why Can't We Afford Export? It's pretty interesting. Anyway, you can't. Restricting data types. All right, so this might be interesting. Say you want to write out a, a template function that only takes certain data types. Well, one way that you can restrict the data type at compile time is um, using a static assert. So this is my example just down here. Let me just copy this and see what happens. I hope it just runs, but it probably won't. Oh, well, we don't need our less than file anymore, so I might just delete that. Our less than header. See you later, buddy. You were good. You performed admirably. And all and paste. Um, okay, so what have we got here? Well, uh, we've got type traits. You have to include a few things. So type traits for um, this little call down here. Um, we've got a min template just here as before, uh, except before it compares uh, A and B parameters, it checks if they are numeric with this little STD is numeric static assert. And if they're not numeric, parameter to min call must be numeric. It's check is numeric. Why does it? Okay, if, if they're not numeric, this assert will fail and it will print out this uh, error message just here. Parameter to min call must be numeric. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Nothing happened. That was good. Oh, maybe it didn't recompile. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Parameter, there you go. Parameter to min call must be numeric. That's snappy, isn't it? That's a snappy error message. Um, because I've tried to call this min with strings, and strings obviously aren't numeric, so if we try something else, maybe we make our um, 
our call something numeric, like integers, they're numeric. Int A equals 90. I'm obsessed with 90. Int B equals 7,823. Okay, so A and B are integers. They are numeric, so this static assert will be passed and we'll get our normal min function. Template call. Yeah, there you go. So that might be a useful way to restrict data types. Um, I also want to say that you don't need to use is numeric here. There's a whole heap of different options. If you just hit um, STD and your little um, scope operator and is an underscore. Uh, these, these are some of the options you've got. So is abstract, is arithmetic, is array, is assignable, is const constructible, all sorts of crazy things. Um, the syntax changes for some reason. So is numeric is, is an underscore and then like an is and numeric. I don't know why. It's just um, slightly different syntax, but um, yeah, there's lots of lots of different things that you can check in your static assert if you want to restrict um, the data types. Might be useful. Um, okay, moving along. This is this this is classy. This is this is absolute class. So template specialization. We can add extra functions for special cases. So, for instance, if you want um, a generic function for all data types except for characters, then um, yeah, you can write a specialization for characters. So you might you might decide that it doesn't make sense to compare the character nine um, with the character ampersand, and you know, rightly so, it doesn't really. I mean, you can compare the ASCII, but what does that mean? <laughs> Not much. Um, so you might write out two template functions. So this uh, top one just here is our normal template function. Let me just uh, get rid of this static assert business that we were businessing ourselves with. And Okay, so I've got two templates here. They're both called min. And the second one starts with the rather bizarre t syntax, uh, template, and then open, close, triangle brackets. And then directly after that, we specify the data type for T, which is char. Yeah, so this is how you specify a specialization uh, for characters. Yeah, so what's going to happen here, if we call min with integers, um, the top generic version is going to get called. So if we just run it, there you go, the smaller is 90. Uh, but what's important is if we use characters, um, this second specialized version will be called because um, because it will <laughs> rather <laughs> so it's going to print lol what <laughs> there you go yeah you can't compare characters you can't set a character to 7823 either but that's another story it's, it's not a good story either <laughs> specializing in one parameter uh, what's this on about what is this on about Okay, so you can make a specialized function that specializes in one parameter but not the other. Okay, so this is if you've got a template that has multiple parameter types, so type name T and type name G. Let me just... There, might make things easier to read. Might make things easier to read. Um, we can write a specialized version of this template that specializes in the first... Um, parameter but not the second and this would be how we do it down here um, this is actually just uh, overriding the template more than anything yeah but let's have let's have a look so let's have a look at a bit of an example and see how it works um, okay so if we use any first parameter that's not a character so say an integer for our first parameter a and a character or a double or whatever for the second parameter um, this first template is going to be called yeah, so it's going to get um, t is an int and g just here, type is a double, it's just going to replace all those, you know, the compiler is going to be right as rain calling the first generic function. But if our a parameter, this first parameter just here, is a character, then it matches this one just here. Yeah, it matches this one. So the um, a being a character will result in too long, did not read Roffle. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And if we do anything else, so say int and a char, even an integer and a char, I mean, it doesn't matter if the second parameter is a character. Um, the second parameter is just going to get um, put in g just here. And if the first is is not a char, then um, we should be right. It'll call the generic function. 
Oh, there you go. There you go. So it's saying um, negative 133 is smaller than 90. Uh, so obviously when uh, 7823 gets stored in this B character just here, it wraps around and does some some really amazing things. I don't really remember what my uh, what my point in this slide was. So, uh, oh, it was just to say that you can uh, specialize in one parameter but not the other. Um, okay, so this yeah, this is this is an interesting little trick. This is an interesting little trick. So, a smallish trick to test if two parameters are the same. Okay, let's just copy and paste. This is a miracle that it works, really, uh, but it does work. So it's it's quite interesting. All right, I've got two templates here with the same name, and it's called same. And the objective of the templates is to decide if the parameters used to call the template function are the same type or not. So if we use int and char just here, and we try and call our function, um, well, they're not the same type, so we should get false. Well, <laughs> zero. Uh, but zero is false in C++ talk. And if they are the same type, so say one's a character and the other one is a character, then we should get true. And we do. One. True. Okay, so but the trick is this. So there are two templates with the same name. One of them takes one data type as a parameter, T, and it assigns both A and B the same, you know, T data type, whatever that, ha that happens to be. And the other template has two data types, T and G. So what's amazing, really, and I don't know how they did this. The people that program compilers are, you know, they're smart, smart chaps. Smart sausages, we'll call them. What's amazing is that this works. So if, if the compiler sees that you've got the same data type, for some reason, um, it just decides not to use this, uh, this second template down here. It decides to use this top one. I don't know why. It just does. Uh, and if they are the same, if they're not the same data type, sorry, um, then we obviously can't use the first template because it's only got one type name. Uh, we would have to use the second. So, yeah, congrats to the compiler writers. That's very, very clever of them. Very nice of them to implement that. I don't know how useful it is. <laughs> um, what have we got here? Okay, so this is really interesting as well. So, this is kind of uh, uh, kind of the same as using a uh, what do they call them? Interface. It's the same as using an interface in a way, but. Um, now yeah, let's just have a bit of a look at the example. So I've got point two D and point three D classes. I think this is about the last slide. So if you're bored, um, maybe watch some Vsauce. <laughs> two point classes just here, and one of them is two D, has X and Y doubles, and the other one is three D, X, Y, and Z doubles. And they both have this function. Rather importantly, they both have a function called magnitude. Yeah, which just computes how far they are from the uh, origin. Okay, and let's make a point 2D, and I might say P1, and I'll set it to 90 again with 90. What's with 90 and 23? I think it's just that the nine and the zero keys are so close to, so close together, and so are two and three. Anyway, it's not really it's not really important, and I'll also make a point 3D. And I might set this one to 82, 91, and 56 for my Z component of that 3D point. And the important thing, the crucial thing, is to copy my template just here. So let's grab him. And let's pop him over here. There he is, right as rain. Okay, now we've got this template function just here that takes two different values, T and P, so whatever they happen to be. In our example, they're going to be... Our points. So T will be P1, or, or the data type of P1, which happens to be a point 2D, and the P type just here will be point 3D. Yeah, so even though A and B are different data types, and there's no, you know, there's no inheritance going on here, um, we can still call A's magnitude and compare it to B's magnitude. So let's just run this and see what happens. I don't know what we'll get. Oh, well, we, we don't get anything, do we? Uh, it, doesn't actually, <laughs> it doesn't actually return anything. Oh, it just returns a bool, so we can see out. Uh, is P1 less than P2? I don't know what it's, uh, what it's going to say. Probably no, I guess. Oh, it is. There you go. Yeah, so this point here is 
smaller in magnitude from the origin of a 2D plane than this point is from the origin of a 3D box thing. I don't know. But the point is that the only thing that matters to this template is that both of these data types, this A and B, have this function magnitude. And they're not, you know, they're not inheriting anything. They didn't inherit this function magnitude from some interface. Um, they just happen to define it. So, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Generally speaking, you'd be better off using inheritance and an interface. Uh, but it's interesting that you can actually do this um, inheritance-like trick without actually using inheritance. Anyway, that's it. So I've got a Facebook and a Patreon. There's links in the video description. Leave questions and comments if you like. I do have a sneaking suspicion that Google is no longer alerting me of every comment left on these vids. So if I don't reply, um, maybe it's Google's fault. Anyway, I want you to have a really good day because you're a legend. <laughs> Adios.